Hey, Sandra. Hey, Gary. <laughs> Are we doing our advertisements here? Yeah, Dolly Parton, coat of many colors, mug. I mean, yeah. what? And your Coke Zero. <laughs> Coke Zero, which people don't know, but that's what I drink the day of a show. <laughs> I got a show today. So cleanses the palate. It cleanses oh, the palate. Oh, and so causes yeah. belching. <laughs> what else is causing? But that's good for the breath. Hmm. Um, Birgit Nielsen always drank a beer before she sang. So they she it. didn't really. No, to help you know, well, things people don't need to know. But we did an interview today. Oh my gosh, I love her so much. Who do we interview? Joyce O'Corey, soprano extraordinaire. Seriously, yeah. love this human. Love her. I love her heart. I love her brain. I love her voice. I love her talent. Um, we had to interview her. I mean, for numerous reasons, but one in particular is her rep is what's going on with her rep wise. And she is about to do Carmen. She's got Norma coming, Don Carlo. I mean, all these wonderful things. And we kind of like Michael Spires, we really were so curious about how she's maneuvering this. So a lot of the conversation was about that. Absolutely. And what she's gone through and the changes she's gone through since the pandemic. Absolutely. As we all have, but her story is it, and journey is, is a really beautiful one to hear about. It truly so, is. And yeah. she's a beautiful person. Just all beautiful over. person inside and out. Love me some Joyce L. Coolery. So yeah. I love this interview because we also talked about social media. We talked about our new projects. Um, I just think this is a good one. I think we, I feel like we always say that it's such a good one for young artists and for singers of wherever they are in their career. This is just a fascinating conversation. Love it. You know, everybody has a different story and a different journey. And it's so great to hear how they are moving along with that journey. So check it out. people. Here's a clip. <laughs> oh, and what, I mean, people, seriously, what do you need to do? Subscribe, subscribe. Sorry, neighbors. That's your warm up, your turned out warm up. That's my turned out warm up. Yeah, with my cold mask. So, love you all. Bye. Bye, everybody. It's very common now to see the focus on maybe the wrong thing instead of the craft. Yeah. Work on your craft, build it, and they will come. And I, I have said this in masterclass before F first impressions last forever. On that note, and I still have the tag on my on the mug. Okay, <laughs> we're classy like that. <laughs> I have a bottle zero. I coke with my gold nails. With your gold nails, ready for a show. For I am very very happy that I get to take that off. <laughs> Are you ready? First, yes. Advertisement for Diet Coke for Coke. Advertisement for Dolly for Dolly Parton. Product placement. Coat of many colors. <laughs> Hello. Okay. You guys are so beautiful. You are beautiful. Oh, oh come on. How are you? How, okay. how are you? Like really? How are you guys? How are you guys? Um, I just came back from Dollywood. It is 7 a.m. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm singing a show. I leave for three hours for the theater. So I know. Listen, oh, my, how's it you going? Ladies, you ladies are well for wait, wait. You ladies are amazing. I love both of you to do this because on a Saturday, Saunders got a show tonight. You're in the middle of uh, almost opening a show, Carmen, if I'm correct, right? <laughs> so I, and I just came off roller coasters. So um, I just love you both very much for doing this on in, in the middle of all your shenanigans. I'm so happy. I'm so happy to do this. Sandra, how is it going? Look at her. I hear, it's, I hear it's amazing. How many shows do you have left? Tonight is the last. So tonight is show number seven. Okay. Okay. Good, 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 good. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, does it feel amazing? Does it feel amazing, this role? Don't tell anybody, but it's super easy. Oh, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised for you. I'm not surprised for you. It's just like high seas, what? It's like a joke. You could like, it's like, for you, this role is like twinkle, twinkle, little star. I know, I know. <laughs> and, and twinkle, twinkle. Twinkle, twinkle. Yeah, whatever. Um, but it ends at the death of you. So it's like all the hard music. Oh, you guys stop there? 
Oh yeah. You did, you did the OG. Oh my God. Oh God. So, and then the, the sign comes down. We're here in Zurich during Turing Day. And the sign comes down and it says, this is where Puccini died and Put stopped. Down and yeah, blah, 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 blah. I mean, poor you, she's got to sing the whole thing. And you know, and I'm yeah. like, okay. that's great. That's great. I don't like that duet at the end anyway. Well, whatever. I, well, at least it makes the character a little interesting because yeah. turned, turned out without the third act is kind of like, mm -mm. but yeah, wait, I, I'm loving it. It feels like vacation. So. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh my God. Who would ever say that? Like turned out as like a vacation. Where where are you and what are you doing? Something very exciting, it sounds like. I am in right now I am in Eisenstadt. Uh outside outside of Vienna. I'm singing at Opa im Steinbruch. And uh we're doing Carmen. We open on Wednesday. Exciting. So yeah. how are you feeling about that? Yeah. Okay. I know it's weird, right? And a lot of people, a lot of people have been like, what are you doing singing Carmen? And then, you know, like I send them a recording of an orchestra and they go, oh, okay, I get it. There's just, I, since like when I first started singing when I was like 20, that was, that Carmen was the opera that made me fall in love with opera and made me want to do opera. And so this character has been in my psyche for my entire adult life. And something is, my middle's always been strong. And, and I kind of like ignored that for a while. And I, anyway, my, the voice is so strange. Um, but something's happened in the last year or two. My voice has totally changed or just feels just different. I mean, I'm 41 now. It's like, it's oh. happening. Like, yeah, 40. 40 is a big, like, yep. shift. I totally, I totally felt a shift at 40, vocally and psychologically. Hmm. So um, it's been huge. And so the, the role feels like butter. It feels like, oh, it feels like therapy. It feels like a massage. It feels like it's connecting me and anchoring me into my body which, you know, we need to sing like the, the big girl rap, right? Yes. As you very well know both. Um, so it's been amazing. Vocally been really a joy. Truly. Okay, so question. That mm -hmm. makes me think you definitely want to sing it again and will probably be hired for it again. So then how would you fit that in your schedule with some of these other things that are coming? Like well, Mama, like Balo, like, uh, you know what I mean? Where you've got to be down there, but you also have to be high, high, high. Well, so I'm, um, you know, I'll be, my, okay. So Norma is happening at the end of August and I'm doing okay. this with um, Eugene Cohn conducting. And, I, mm -hmm. and before I came here, I went uh, and I stayed with Eugene for three days in his home in Jersey and we worked on Norma. Okay. While I was, while I was, so I was learning Carmen and Norma at the same time, because this was a last minute gig. And so I learned both roles in like six days. I'm lucky that I have photographic memory and I'm a little bit insane in that way. <laughs> wait, 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 Both roles yeah. in six days. Yeah. At the oh, same time. I know, I know, I know. It's really, I know. I tell, I have a really freakish kind of uh, mind. Like I, I, I can see the music in my mind. But, okay, but, that's but, part of me, but part of my, my vocal chorus just went like, um, I'm leaving the building. <laughs> yeah, but let me tell you, this is what's been surprising, right? So Norma, because it has so much declamato and so much like, it has to be so anchored, otherwise there's no power right. to her. So angry, you know? Mm -hmm. and, that, that Carmen has actually made my vocalism for Norma stronger, I think. And that's what I discovered when I was with Eugene and we were working on Norma. And then he'd say, let me hear a little bit of the Carmen. And he was like, they work really well together. It's been shocking. Okay. So I rehearse Norma and then I come home. Uh, I heard, rehearse Carmen and I come home and I like do all the Norma vocalises to like keep the height. Smart girl. But they work well. I don't know for me. Maybe well, I'm you 
I found that when I did the Medea, which is which is a non high C role, right? right. Um, and then coming back to seeing things like Turned Out after that, I found that it anchored the voice really well. So as yeah. long as one doesn't over exaggerate or overblow, which is can be a tendency of not just you, not like I mean not you, but singers in general. Yeah. Oh, Vermin, I got to darken. Right. If you sing it with your voice and your column of voice, then I don't see why, if it's connected here to the chest, why mm -hmm. you can't then just go into Norma and- That's the thing. It's just, they're just notes, right? They're just notes on a page. And so did you feel that when you were singing Medea that you had to make sure you were still vocalizing like all the way up? Or else yeah. the tendency was to just slam into that chest. Yeah, yeah, and, makes I mean, you, and one listens as you did, like, Callus, we both read that Callus was your inspiration with this Carmen. If one listens to Callus singing Medea, you're gonna get in trouble. <laughs> girlfriend, man, she just pulled that chest all the way up, and you think, yeah, ah, oh. uh, ouch, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let me just pull those back down. Yep. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Uh, so God bless her, and I love Maria Callus, and she was an inspiration to all of us. I know that. But yeah. Yeah. When she did there at the end in that Medea, ooh, girlfriend. Girlfriend, <laughs> no. No. Uh, what, a trip. what a trip. So, so you open the Carmen, then you go and do Norma after that, or do they run kind of? So I open Carmen, I do two performances, and then I go to Athens and I rehearse Norma for four days. And then I come back here and I do another two performances of Carmen. And then, and then I go to, <laughs> you guys are going to think I'm absolutely insane. Then okay. I go to Sweden to do a one Tosca. And then I go, I come back here and I do another slew of performances of Carmen. And then I go do, I finish August with Norma. I do the two, the two performances of Norma are at the end of August. Is so Tosca just a, a concert? Yeah. Oh. So like okay. semi-staged. Uh, so it'll be just a one and done and yeah. What, in all of this repertoire that you've done, what is your favorite and easiest to sing? Like what's the stuff that you can sing that night and roll out of bed the next morning and you still feel good? Carmen. For real. <laughs> not the Bel Canto stuff, not like Bolena or. No, 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 because that is like, uh... Sandra, I've read that you've said you have to live like a nun when you're singing that. Or walking on a tightrope. Like, but that, it's just, exactly. No, there's no way. I can't sing that rolling out of bed. I have to wake up and vocalize and then take a nap and then vocalize again. And it's just the whole thing. Right. Harmon is just, because I speak very low and it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just there. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, okay, yes, I'm at home in the Bel Canto. It's what I've been doing for mm, all this time and it's, it's felt great, but it's a totally different athletic mechanism that, you know, I ha you have to train for in a totally different way. This production of Carmen is very physical. I'm literally running around the whole, st like literally running. Mm -hmm. um, because the stage is so gigantic. So that's what's challenging right now is that it's physically demanding. Does that, do you like that? Because sometimes I think when you put movement with, with the singing, it frees up the voice or is it too much that you're just getting tired? There are some moments where I, ha I have to really pace myself and slow down my breath because I can mm -hmm. feel my heart pumping. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. I have a phrase right now. And, and, um, but I do like the movement. It kind of gets me out of my head. Mm. You know, don't you know, do you, don't you feel that? It's like, we get no. so, how's it going? How's it sounding? Well, how is this vowel? How, blah, blah, blah. And just getting into the body just kicks, mm. the instincts kick in, right? But, uh, mm. but it's been, it's been uh, kind of a journey figuring out, okay, where do I need to slow my breath down and kind of mark the physical movement and mm. so that I deliver a successful phrase. Can we talk about that for a second? Cause I, especially for young singers, because you never know what you're gonna walk into, right? With what a director is gonna be doing. Mm -hmm. So 
in that vein, when I'm listening to you, I mean, how are you taking care of your body during this? Because do you feel like, I mean, I know that you take care of your body and work out and all that kind of stuff. Are you glad that you do that? Because can you imagine hitting this job and not having done cardio workouts and things like that? I mean, yeah, it's how so, important that is. It's, it's so important now. We're not, we're not in the era of park and bark at all. It's, it's about what you can do vocally in tandem with what you can do with physically what you can sing through what and yeah I mean I had a, a long period of time where I wasn't working out and now I'm the last couple of months I'm back at it because it's I have to I have to feel good in my body and so what I've been doing I've been doing these <laughs> workouts on Beachbody um 80 day <laughs> obsession I'm obsessed with that 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 program I've done like four times I love it but I I do the workout here at home on my iPad mm -hmm. and you see, I have like all my equipment, you know, and um, while I'm working out, I stop when I'm out of breath mm -hmm. and I sing a song. Mm -hmm. And like, it's just training. And yeah, it's, yeah you I know. feel like pe people don't understand that. I think uh, that we are really athletes. It's not just about what's in our throat. It's not, it's about our mental health, our soul health and our physical health. I think it's a wonderful combo. I wish that somebody had told me this shit, you know, early on in my career, because uh, honestly, the focus was purely the voice, 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 voice. And then all of a sudden, you know, we interviewed um, Quinn Kelsey and he talked about this. He said, nobody really talks about that when you're in training. And then all of a sudden you get into a young artist program or you hit a job and somebody's like, Hey, um, I just want to pull you aside and just say, you know, this is actually like really important too. I, I don't like the whole conversation about, you know, being overweight and singing because I feel like everybody comes in different packages and health looks different on everybody. So um, as long as you're healthy and your blood works beautiful, I've said this before, I don't, and you can move on stage and sell me the thing. I don't really care, you know, what package you come in, but I think that our packages in whatever form they are need to be healthy mind, body, and soul. So for this, and I, I wish that somebody had, had said this to me early on. Oh, Amen. Me too. Yeah. You know, it, it's, um, it's so important, the connection and, and the balance. And I think that that's the word that we always come back to is balance. <laughs> if, if you're mentally balanced, if you're vocally balanced, if you're physically balanced, and, and how do you maintain that, especially during the pandemic? How did you? Yeah, that's the million dollar question, right? How do you maintain the balance? Is it, you know, I, I, to quote one of my favorite movies, Eat, Pray, Love, I'm such a girl, I love that movie, but um, <laughs> he, the, 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 the dude says, um, part of losing balance is, losing balance is part of living a balanced life. And I, I feel like that is so, that's so, so well descriptive of, of the career and of the industry because it's it's like it's like this right and you just try like one part will slip and then you try to bring it up and then it's just juggling and and but yes i agree with what you're saying in that carrie that um health comes in different packages for me the exercise is, goes right to my brain me it's too. i i have such a tendency to uh, be depressive. I've struggled with depression since I was a teenager and, and exercise is the only thing that gets me out of my funk. And I need it because otherwise I have no confidence on stage. Mm -hmm. If I'm not feeling good in my body and in my mind, I'm like a wilted flower on stage. I, I need, oops, I need to fuel this part of me. And so exercise is so, is everything it's so important. I, I didn't, I have found that because that used to be when I was a kid, because I was in sports, big time sports and loved it. And then got into this business and then exercise just kind of became eventually exercise became punishment because I was told all the time I wasn't enough. You still have, you have such a beautiful face, but why are you heavy? You know, that kind of thing. Why are you chubby? Why are you whatever? And so then exercise just became punishment, 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 punishment. And it actually took getting into therapy to realize, wait a minute, actually exercise is for me, is for my mental. So now exercise is really, when I get, I love my, I found what I loved. She encouraged me to say, what, what do you love doing? And I was like, I really love being on a bike. I love being on a bike outside. I love being on my Peloton bike. Um, I really enjoy walking. So she was like, well, why aren't you incorporating? I love lifting. Why aren't you incorpor incorporating those things into your, 
into your schedule. And so then figuring out how to balance that around singing and what works and what doesn't, you know, as far as like, if I lift, I can't necessarily, I'm not, my voice doesn't really respond to, to singing after lifting. So I have to be really careful about how I do all of that. Um, and as we get older, like our, I mean, our bones really need the lifting. So it's not yeah. necessarily about muscles. It's just about strength and stability. No one talks about this. No one, they don't teach us this, that, mm -hmm. um, you know, that working out, it, it gives us endorphins. I mean, it's, it's, hello, and hello. When I'm happy. I, I don't know about you two, but I sing the best when I'm happy. I mean, no girl. doubt about it. I get that position Look, here in my in my voice. When I when I'm sad, you know, you just can't sing like this. It's no. like it feels like you're pulling weights behind you to to get the voice up when you're yeah. down yeah. and in the dumps. And your body is uh. no. so. But nobody talks about. And then on top of it all, we're girls. We're women. Well, we there's that the, the thing. The well, that's always been wanting to talk about that in an interview. So I'm so glad we're here yeah. three girls talking about this because people, I mean, this is a very real thing. And you know, the, 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 oh, she's had an off night. Well, you know what? I'm not going to get up on stage and make an announcement that, you know, I have I'm to do my period. Excuse me. I'm menstruating. Yeah. It's for, I don't know how it affects you, but for me, it totally takes the bloom off my voice. Totally. It's just like, it's like well, it depends. It, I've talked to a lot of doctors as has Carrie I mean recently she's Carrie's just you know into all of this I'm in the middle yeah. of a, a hormone hell sorry <laughs> but people you know you each person responds differently each singer does each person and it depends upon how your vocal cords are if you have thick vocal cords then they're just going to get thicker and, and it's like carrying two sacks of potatoes, you know, when you're trying to sing, you're trying to make them two by four. Together and they're like, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Whereas the lighter voices actually historically don't have it as hard because their cords are longer and thinner. So right. us people, which I think Carrie probably has nice, juicy, plump vocal cords too. Yes. Um, <laughs> You know, we, we, we get it the worst because we're like, uh, yeah, somebody kill me, but yeah. go and find out. That's what I say to young singers. Go and look at your chords, find out what kind of chords you have. Cause that yeah. also tells you a lot about your voice, but, yeah. but yeah, I mean, you're we, still young enough, but we're going, we're dealing with the whole menopause thing. Yeah. Perimenopause, but you actually, FYI, just pay attention to your body because perimenopause can start in your late thirties. And I didn't, I didn't know what was going on with me last year. And I thought, what in the world is happening? And then finally figured it out. And then, you know, I'm in the midst of figuring out how, what's going to be best for me. And the thing is that we singers don't talk about this, at least the singers in the generation above us, because God forbid you mention menopause, because then everybody thinks you're old, like all of a sudden, yeah. like you're some old lady. I mean, what the hell? I and I, I, I know that so many older singers are are still that are still singing are suffering because nobody's talking about this. The dryness, the I mean, it's a, a whole list of things. Thank God Sandra doesn't give a fuck and is like, I'm in menopause. <laughs> but but no. what is your experience with all of this? And what do you what do your what is your experience with theaters with all of this? I don't really know what to say and how to answer that because I just kind of get on with it and do my job as best I can. You know, it's, it's I've, I have said to conductors in the past, hey, you know, this is TMI and it's probably gonna make you uncomfortable, but I have my period and I need your help tonight. Yeah. So if you feel me pushing a tempo or slowing down, I'm doing it on purpose. So I need you to be with me. And most of the time they're uncomfortable. Oh. They're uncomfortable enough that they say, oh, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I mean, other than that, I just hydrate, try to sleep, try to sweat it out and just get on with my, my yeah. day and try to give myself some grace and <laughs> know that I'm going to do my best and it is what it is. Right. I believe the high, high, high roles. Like when I was singing, um, 
de Verreux, I and I I felt it. It's like, oh God, I, I feel it. You know, and Carmen, I probably won't. Because I can be just down here oh. with the chords. And the chords. <laughs> Were you ever told, like, in your career that you don't ever mention that? I was told, don't ever talk about your period. Don't ever, if you need to get out of rehearsal or get out of whatever, like, honestly, the joke was, say you have explosive diarrhea. Diarrhea. <laughs> oh, because, oh, so that's better, though. That, supposedly, that's supposedly, I guess, explosive diarrhea. Nobody really wants to find out why or why you can't leave your house. I mean... That's what I was told. Don't don't say shit. I was never told that, and you know, implicitly is that the word? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I'll hear sometimes. Um, but it was inferred, like you don't talk about these things. You don't talk about certain things. And and the the thing that like I I I try to I have I have just a few students, and I try to tell them there's nothing. We cannot separate our artistry from our humanity. As singers, they're, it's, it's one and the same. Mm -hmm. And so we have to give ourselves grace when it comes to our artistry, when our person, either mentally, vocally, emotionally, if we're unwell, we have to be kinder to ourselves in those moments because we're not just robots and programmable machines and, or an instrument that you just pull out of the box. Right. But it's hard when people, when people judge us and criticize us, and especially now in this era of social media, um, everybody's a critic and everybody has an opinion. And how do you, how do you block those thoughts? I used to be really bad at that, actually. I used to, um, it, it, things used to go really straight to my heart and I took them personally and it, it played a number on my my psyche for quite some time. And actually in the last three years during this COVID situation, I had, um, uh, I took a course uh, to train to be a life coach, which is something I've been wanting to do for about eight years. Okay. And so I went through the whole course and anyway, I consumed a lot of material about how the the brain affects life, right? And so the idea is that thoughts, sentences in our brain affect our, like they create emotion. The emotion causes us to have a certain, to make a certain action. And then the action leads to a certain circumstance mm -hmm. and round and round it goes, right? And I don't know, Carrie, if I ever told you this, but the, um, Brooke Castillo of the Life Coach School gives this analogy about um, uh, criticism. And she says, if somebody were to come up to you and tell you, Carrie, I hate your blue hair. You would literally wouldn't feel anything. You wouldn't feel offended. You wouldn't feel upset. You wouldn't feel hurt because no part of you believes that you have blue hair. Mm -hmm. So there it is. She makes the point that if somebody comes at you with something, that there's something inside you that believes there's some truth to it. And that's, you turn it inward and it hurts because yeah. you're not yourself. So I thought about that so much. And I realized what are the things that I am insecure about? Some things about my voice, some things that I really need to work on, you know, um, things about my body. Okay. So that the work is mine. Nobody can take, a, take away my work and nobody can make the work happen for me. Right. I have to do it myself. So I spent the last two years working my ass off on those things that have been bothering me. And now when I get comment on YouTube or whatever, I just, I go, ha 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 ha. <laughs> I don't feel anything. Sometimes yeah. I don't feel anything. It doesn't mean that I will never feel anything ever again, but right. I finally, maybe it's turning 40. Maybe I'm finally okay with right. just accepting myself and not having to prove anything. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of it comes from the confidence that I've, that I was able to build working on myself with, you know, just alone in a room, but also with my coaches that I am so grateful for. I love that. You know, that's one of our questions lately. 
with people we've been interviewing is how did the pandemic change you? How did it change your perspective on life, on your career? What, as you move forward in your life, what do you are changing differently? I don't know if I said that well, it's seven in the morning. People don't function well (laughs) early in the morning. Um, But uh, I just, you know, I I feel like you just answered that with that. Like you, you jumped into something. Yes. We've known each other forever. I feel like, um, my mom, my mom would call you a kindred spirit. Like we couldn't talk in like for four months and we pick up the phone. It's like, we just had a conversation yesterday. I just absolutely adore you. Um, but, um, I, but I love that. I love, cause I remember talking about that during the pandemic and actually how you sound right now versus when we talked then, I mean, it's like a, like a whole transformation. Like Do you see that? that? Yeah. There's like so much light with you. It's just so cool to see this. I'm just so happy for you. Thank you. Thank you. That's, you know, we've all been through so much. Has anybody escaped this without just no scars? I mean, my entire life fell apart during COVID, like completely blew up. And I'm now putting the pieces back together. And the more I talk to people, that happened to everybody. Yep. In many many ways. I mean, Sandra, girl. I know, honey. I know. Hey, you know what? I know. That, I was so here about that, but you look good, girl. You look light. I mean, that but, doesn't kill you, makes you stronger. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. But it, 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 I think it was a, a pause for so many people, not just in our community, mm-hmm. but so many people worldwide, a pause to really stop and say, whoa. You know, because we get so, we get on that little wheel, the hamster wheel, right? And we just keep mm-hmm. going and going and going. And we go, we wake up, we go to work, we come home, we make dinner, wake up, go to work. And it's like, whoa, I think we need to stop and 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 really look at what we're doing. And and it sounds like you had that opportunity. I know Carrie did, I did, and yeah. and now we can and now we can move forward on that that new path and be aware because I don't think we were aware. We were we weren't. As a society in general, we were all yeah. just existing and not living. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I mean, the, that's the thing that I, I that I realized so very strongly is, wait a minute, I'm a human being. I mean, I, I have a family, I have feelings, I have people that I love, I have, it's, it's not just the career, which is a blessing. I know it's like a dream come true. I'm so fortunate to do, you know, what I've always dreamt of doing, but I sacrificed and I gave up a lot for it, which that's the way it goes is something, it's a, it's a calling, it's a calling. And I do not take it for granted at all, but there's also more to us than I think it's so important to nourish that part of our lives, just our, our private life and our inner life here and here. And absolutely. So did it lead, did the pandemic then lead to any new exciting projects that you have coming up? Maybe? Anything? Which we have heard about and would mm-hmm. like to promote and help. That's probably, that's well, probably what, a leading what, question. <laughs> what? <laughs> What are you? <laughs> um, smooth. It's so wait. smooth. It's so smooth. Smooth transition. Uh, what are you referring? Um, you have a project coming up uh, near and dear to your heart, if I am correct, about uh, a new, are they songs, Lebanese songs? Girl, no. I did research. <laughs> Yeah, we're the divas. I'm sorry. We're the screaming divas. Can we talk about this? Do you want to talk about this? Do you want to? Okay. Of course. Okay. Okay. This whole thing started in 2013 when I was singing in France. Okay. And my friend who at the time was casting director came over and he was like, I'm going to make you some crepes. It's your first time singing in France. We're going to have crepes. And so I was like, okay, great. So he's making crepes and there's flour everywhere. Like you couldn't, you couldn't like on the ceiling, like everywhere. And then a colleague of ours comes in and he looks around at the disaster and he says, oh mon dieu, c'est Beirut. Oh. And I was like, I'm sorry, what did you just say? And he said, c'est Beirut. And I was like, really? Is this what you guys say here to describe chaos? You, you say, 
oh, it's Beirut. That was like, for me, because I thought, wow, this is how the world sees us. But it's true. I mean, really, like the only thing you see in the news is just the insanity and the horribleness and you don't know anything about the country other than I don't want to go there. I mean, honestly, like that. I know, but can I just say for the record, Mm -hmm. for all your fans and everybody watching, if you ever get a chance to go to Lebanon, go, like don't hesitate. It's amazing. It's mind blowing. It is beautiful. It is rich in culture. And, and, and poetry and art and beach and ski and cuisine. Like it's, it's, it's the best country. You posted on. some pictures. It's the best country on Earth. It hmm? looks beautiful. You posted some pictures recently on social media. It it's looks amazing. beautiful. So that kind of planted a seed of like, whoa, okay, this is not cool. And then um, if a couple of years ago I did it, no years ago oh my god 2019 I did um I did a recital where I included Lebanese songs that we just arranged for piano and I've since and it was a it was a big success people really liked hearing those songs that they had never heard before um and so I've been working closely with my musical partner and very close friend Sirush Krajan who is a Lebanese Armenian composer, arranger, pianist, like just genius musical freak. Um, and we've been taking songs that are, uh, you know, th- that represent us, Lebanese culture that everybody in Lebanon knows. And I've been kind of singing them in my way. I'm not an Arabic singer. I mean, I speak Arabic, but I'm not, I don't do the quarter tones and I know I'm, I'm, a, I'm oh, you know, like that's not, <laughs> that's not what you're used to hearing in Arabic music. So I'm singing them in my Joyce way so that I can bridge, you know, the Arabic world to our world hmm. and people can then hear this music in a way that they can understand it. And so we will be recording, um, we've been working on all this um, and it's coming soon. So it's going to be with uh, chamber ensemble, Arabic violin, cool. percussion. It, I, I'm so in love with this project. I can't even tell you. It's I like, it. It, it fires me up more than, more than anything. So. so you also do work, you started, was it during the pandemic that you started working with young singers in Lebanon? Like that's another huge project that's near and dear. Yeah, th- guys, this was mind blowing because after the explosion, August 4th, 2020, as if the country needed any more drama, um, I just, something just like descended upon me. I, it was, it was bigger than me. Was, mm-hmm. You have to do this. And so I put out this thing on Instagram. Hey, who wants voice lessons? They're free. I, I have time. Let's do this. Wow. You know, it's time to just focus on some good things right now. Mm-hmm. And and I had a lot of responses. And so then I ended up, I created an application form on my website and I couldn't manage it all. I had, I can't, uh, hundreds and hundreds of oh applications from, from serious students of singing yeah. um, and from, you know, somebody who just wanted to take singing as a, hobby and just for fun Mm -hmm. I had to eventually kind of filter it down and so I I ended up focusing on those who are really wanting to pursue Mm -hmm. music seriously and it kept me it kept me really busy and then that turned into going to teach there in person I love uh, on and meeting these people face to face and kind of having a little community and uh it's been very good for my soul to do that because I, you know, left Lebanon. It was very traumatic and um, huge culture shock, Mm. but I I was fortunate in that I grew up in a country where I was able to study and I was able to have opportunity and I was able to connect with people who could help me build a career. That's not possible in Lebanon. So I know how fortunate I am and I thought, I can't have to help these kids. So that's another thing that I, it's very much at the front of my mind because I, I really feel 
the responsibility to to help and that's not like Ooh, i have this responsibility no i, I really legit feel like somebody's got to do something here and and i know both countries so if not me then who and if not now then when <laughs> you know mm -hmm. so exciting honestly thank so let's you what what next what what fun roles do you have coming up in the future after carmen after <laughs> new and exciting new and exciting norma don carlo that's a newbie uh boca negra which i'm super excited about i know i feel like that's i'm really excited about that i feel like it's gonna fit very nicely because it's not super heavy uh and uh I'm doing an opera called La Reine Garçon in Montreal. It's a brand new piece about um, Christine, Queen of Sweden, who was like uh, the boyish queen who dressed as a boy. And anyway, new production. It's I think it's going to be really cool. Where and is that? In Montreal. Oh, cool. Yeah. And I'm doing an opera called La Sorcière. It's just really interesting stuff in the middle of... Um, Don Carlo and Boca Negra, which right, yeah. So hmm, I have some, some stud studying to do, and uh, you're probably going to get some calls from me. <laughs> <laughs> um, can yeah. we talk briefly? Because I listened to an interview that you did on Opera Glasses, and you talked about um, social media, and you talked about young artists, and I think I'd really love to repeat that here to blast that everywhere because I thought it was super, super important. Would you mind sharing mm -hmm. like what your opinion is about social media and young artists, et cetera? Do you remember what y'all talked about? Um, yeah, I think so. Guide me if I'm if I'm okay. off. Uh, but I think what what we were discussing is how. Um, Young artists these days growing, they, they're growing up in this milieu of social media, right? They don't, that's what they know. Um, so many of them are putting content out uh, without necessarily being ready and just, just putting things forward and to get followers and to get, which is, I understand why, mm -hmm. you know, we, 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 we want to be liked, we want to be popular, we want to see those numbers go up, we think it's going to make us more hireable. I, I get all that. It's, it's this game we have to play in, and mm -hmm. to a certain extent, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but I find so many putting the cart before the horse and doing pu publicity when the product isn't quite ready to publicize yet. You know, and I know like now, after 40, I feel like I'm just now coming into my own and understanding myself and figuring out my voice. That doesn't mean that they all have to wait until they're 40. <laughs> you know, everybody has their own <laughs> That's ex extreme. But I, I, I think it's very common now to see the focus on maybe the wrong thing instead of the craft. Yeah. Work on your craft, build it and they will come. And I, I have said this in masterclass before, first impressions last forever. So like they literally last forever. I, I remember singing for somebody at 24 that still today doesn't like me because I wasn't good then or I still, you know, and I'm like, okay, well, they're never going to hire me because they heard me when I was 24. Uh -huh. You know, it's Singing it's the wrong route nature. too, you know, and they 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 write it down they forever and ever. And there are some people some people who just think you, you will never change. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so I think they have to be young artists today have to be really careful what they put out there and just stay focused a little, little bit inward on your craft, on your artistry, on your humanity. Work on who you are, who you want to express, how you want to express it. Make sure that your instrument knows how to express it then think about getting a publicist and think about posting on social media and just with a little bit of with a little bit of caution real with a lot of caution actually i have to say personally with social media because i've had a love hate relationship with it for a long time and lately it's been why do i want to post that what what am i trying to get out of it what does it do for me what does it do for other people i mean mm -hmm. and i that's where for me 
social media is where I can find a happy place with it. Does that make sense? Because oh, yeah. I don't want to put something out there because I want attention. I just want to put something out there because this is what's going on today. Does that make sense? Or, I mean, there was a, a reel I, I posted because um, it made me laugh and I thought, oh my gosh, like this is actually what's happening today. It was about perimenopause. And the response that I got from people I haven't even talked to in years, people I went to high school with that are my age that are going through this was immense. And my phone blew up just based on a reel because it was so, it was so real. It was a real, real. Yeah. <laughs> it's honest. And that's what I think. I think social media should mm -hmm. be honest content and not, oh, look at this dinner that I'm eating right now. I mean, no. Yeah, I don't. I don't care. My publicist who, so she was the host of the Opera Canada interview. She was my publicist for 10 years. We were in school together. She always said, um, honesty resonates. It does. People can, people can feel it, you know, and I have, I have somebody help me with my social media. I just, I, I want to focus on my music and, okay. but all my, all, you know, everything that I, that I put out there are my words. I don't say anything that I don't mean um, because that's, it's very tempting to just put content out because, ooh, duh, but no, it has to be honest and come from a real place. And that's exactly it. Why do I want to share this? Why Is it going to add something to somebody's life? Is it going to help sell a ticket? It's, you know, these are important questions to be asking when posting. Mm -hmm. You're right. I felt that way. I, it was always so hard for me, especially when I was on a job that all of us were just so miserable on. I mean, it was just the wrong time for all of it. And, but people that I was castmates with were posting all this like positive stuff about the job. And I thought, oh my God, like I, it's hard for me. I mean, you guys know me well, so, you know, it's, I, I am who I am. Yeah. I, my emotions are where they are. And I, if I'm miserable, like fuck all y'all I'm not posting shit you know so. <laughs> obviously she didn't give up fuck for Lynn no no <laughs> Jesus still loves me it's okay we're good what is that we're with what's that thing where uh, I love Jesus but I drink a little I'm like where's the one yeah. where I love Jesus but I cuss a lot <laughs> oh Dear, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 I don't know. So it's hard for me, but I, but I've also been, you know, argued with with um, social media uh, people run run companies. Um, actually, Andrew Alsley, who I respect immensely, and he's like, Carrie, whatever, get over it. It's a job. Like this is part of your job. This is part of your job to post to promote not only your career but the opera company and all this kind of stuff. So I have a, mm -hmm. I have a hard time with it. Sure, I mean, fair enough, and I agree. It is part of our job now, whether we like it or not. And I enjoy social media. I enjoy posting. I enjoy seeing what others are up to. Uh, if there's somebody I don't want to follow, I don't follow. I keep it very clean for me, for my mental health. Right. Um, I don't look at things that make me feel bad. Right. I don't follow people that upset me, you know. Um, and I post, I make sure that I post things that if I'm having a horrible time in a production, I'm not going to say that I'm having an amazing time. You'll probably just get a photo. Yeah. You know, rehearsal number three. Know. You know? <laughs> so now we know if there's just a photo, you're like, me, me. <laughs> oh, she's posted a photo today. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's honesty, honesty resonates. And I think the more we are authentic with it, the more fun it is for everybody. You know, I, so. I mean, how often do, it's funny though. How often do we go through an airport and we're just miserable and our suitcase broke and we're sweating and our flight is late and, or we got bumped or whatever. And then we, we see a post like so excited. I'm on my way to la la la. And it's just, it's not reality. No, it's, no, total it's not bullshit. It's total bullshit. Jason used to tell me, he said, you should do an Instagram account that is just about that kind of stuff. Like the real the real behind this yeah behind this is of what we're telling the, the public and this is actually what happened you know like you're sweating bullets yeah. you got the sweat stains on your armpits your suitcase is broken <laughs> and you're like my fucking flight's been delayed yet again Ugh. yeah mm -hmm. yeah reality but you know what i kind of post stuff like that i think yeah you know, 
Uh, yeah, and people love to see that from you. People do. It's well, like the, the, the diva, the diva in the real world. You know, it's just part of what you do. Part of the real world is I gotta go sing a show. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. So sorry, oh, yeah. but shall we do rapid questions, rapid fire questions, very quickly? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. That makes me kind of. You ready? Okay. No fail motivational song. I have the tiger. Oh my God, I was just thinking that. Oh my God. That's <laughs> that is freaky. That is freaky. Isn't that just like the best song ever? I remember before opening of Devereux, I was so nervous and I was like, oh, I have the tiger. Yeah. Like, oh, it's, it got me through. It got me through. Yeah, sorry, Carrie. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, uh, what the world needs now, fill in the blank. Forgiveness. Whoa. 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 Amen. That hit me. Yeah. Favorite place on earth? Lebanon. Sorry. Okay. Do you have a secret talent that we all need to know about? <laughs> oh, God. This is supposed to be rapid, right? Yes. Yeah. I have two. I can okay. tie cherry stems with my tongue and I can write and I can write with my feet. I think we, you and I are twins. You know that? I truly think we, are, you can, can write with me. your toes. You can. Yes, I no, can. I got to see this. I need a video. Sorry, I need a video. Sorry. Will not make it, the video will not make it on Screaming Divas. Sorry. <laughs> Most beloved thing that you own. I have a ring that I got in Lebanon. I'm not wearing it right now, but it's amethyst. It's like, I think one of a kind. It's one of my most prized possessions and it's material and I'm sorry, but that's, I love it. Cool. What's your favorite word in any language? What are these questions that I've never thought of before? <laughs> uh, Favorite word? I don't know, but I can tell you my least favorite word. Right, so oh, tell me. Least favorite word. Can I say that? Yes. I hate it. Quaint. Quaint. I loathe the word quaint. It gets on my nerves. I know for most people it's moist. For me, it's quaint. Oh, that's quaint. Oh God, I can't. Like, no. Okay. <laughs> um, favorite curse word, any language? I mean, I mean, I mean, it's, it's just you so universal. You can even say Lebanon. Yeah. No. What sound or noise do you love? Water. And hate? Any water. Any water. And hate? Chewing. But no. not, not, not chewing, 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 but this like supping. Oh my God. It just drives me mental. Like, please just close your mouth. <laughs> and Carrie? The last question. Okay. If heaven exists, what do you want to hear God say as you walk through the pearly gates? Welcome home, baby. <laughs> So where, just quickly, where can our fans see you in the next few months? Can you kind of- uh, I in Steinbruch in July, August, um, out, just outside of Vienna. Mm -hmm. Sweden in Bostad in Birgit Nilsson Museum. Museum, where did that accent come from just now? Um, right. August 12th. And then Norma in Athens, uh, August 28th and 30th. That's Ooh. the summer. And next season, where 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 can you divulge where you're starting next season? Yes, I'm starting in October. I'm singing an opera by Liszt called Sardanapalo in Budapest in October, and then November, December, I will be in uh, Monte Carlo singing um, Don Carlo. Amazing, amazing! Yeah. You go, girl. Yeah. Thank you, honey. Thank you, thank you, sister. Thank, thank you so you much, God. Joining us. Thank and you. Toy toy with the Carmen. I'm sure thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, I, mean, I want to hug you. you. <laughs>
<laughs> you too. Have yeah. a great show. Oops, oops, oops. Have a great show tonight. Have a great show. Have a great show. Toy Toy. Thank For you. Toy Toy. We need a phone date. Phone date. <laughs> Thanks so much, girl. Love to you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Bye.